Beef farming in Kenya is an age-old practice that was originally left for pastoralists. It involves breeding and raising cattle for meat. This is different from dairy farming where the cattle are reared for milk. The big guns in the exportation of meat worldwide are Argentina, New Zealand and Australia. Beef cattle farming in Kenya is mainly done by pastoral communities and subsistence farmers. The large-scale beef farmers are found mainly in Rift Valley, Kajiado and Eastern Kenya. The distribution is dependent on rainfall patterns. They rear animals for commercial purposes as well as subsistence. Small-scale beef farming in Kenya is however done in almost all parts of the country mainly for subsistence purposes as well as for dairy. There are two main variants of beef cattle in the country. The first and most popular are the indigenous breeds like the Zebu and the Boran. The other types are exotic beef breeds. These include the Cimento, Hereford, Angus and the Flag V, which has become a favorite to many farmers. On today's show, we are going to be focusing more on the Flag V breed. Until recently, Flag V was virtually unheard of in Kenya, which is quite astonishing in the world, outnumbered only by the Holsteins. Flag V is a German word literally meaning spotted cattle. Breeding started in Bavaria, Germany way back in the 1890s and only came to Africa in 1910, initially in South Africa. Flag V semen was imported to Kenya eight years ago and is readily available in most parts of the country through Flag V Genetic East Africa Limited. Essentially, we imported two cows. They were imported to East Africa from South Africa so that the farmers could actually see them and we bred them in our farms here in Kenya. And we also imported semen from Germany so that most farmers could actually use the semen to crossbreed the Aroko cattle, that is the Maasai cattle, the Sahiwos, the Bolans, and the Frisians and the Ashers that were around so that they could get what we call crossbreeds. That was around eight years ago. That is when we started doing it on a big way. And now the farmers have been actually crossbreeding the freight fee from the first filial generation to the second filial generation and I think most farmers now are having some pedigrees in, at different stages of production. There are only very few purebred flag V animals around so if you're interested in this breed, crossbreeding flag V with your existing cows is the easiest option unless of course you have the means to directly import purebred animals from abroad. Dr. Anthony Gishohi, the general manager at Flake V Genetics East Africa, explains how a farmer can breed their own pedigree Flake V cows. In terms of production, in terms of the Flake V advantage, your animal has improved by 75%. So even the phenotype, how the animal looks like, it will be more towards the brown color and the white of the freak fee. It will be more muscled, it will be better, it will be more disease resistant, and it will even give you milk with higher butter fat and better protein. Now, when you get the third video generation, you have to go another one step. The second step is that you take the daughters and then you inseminate them with different bulls again of the freak fee breed, and then you go to what is called now the threes. Those are the pedigrees. And they are not always 100, they never get to 100 because you cannot lose the original genes of the cow that you started with. So they get to around 92, 87.5 to around even 95%. If they get all that genes of the freak fee and they are above 90% or above 87.5, those are the ones we call the pedigrees. And uh, the, because of the original genes of the breed that you started with, it gives them higher heterosis or what we call hybrid vigor. The productivity is better. So the farmers can achieve that in a period of about five to six years. With better planning, it can even be done in four and a half years. So if we are doing it consistently and getting a calf every year with your breeds. 
The breed, according to Dr. Gishohi, is the only proven dual purpose breed in the world. You don't need to be a professional to succeed with Flegvi, but keep in mind that if your present cows are small, frail and weak due to inadequate feeding, disease and general poor management, using Flake V semen is no magic cure and the resulting Flake V cross cows will probably even look worse due to their enormous size and correlating feed and management requirements. Dr. Geshohi explains some of the physical traits you should look out for for you to identify this wonder breed. The, the Frekfi cow is a large stout animal, it's got a uh, brown color, it's got a white head and the legs are also white in most cases and it has got uh, what we call a flat back and the animal is muscled, it does not have bony structures like you find in most of the daily breeds because of that dual purpose aspect of it. So when you go to a farm and you find a cow that is well muscled, with good strong feet and legs, with a very well positioned udder, and it's got some white head with some white tuft, and the animal looks beautiful, shiny and strong, that one is a freak feed. Now you need to confirm the breed line of what bulls the farmer was using so that you can say, okay, this is a pedigree because it's been bred with the freak feed semen that was imported from Germany or France, and it is this quality. Flake V are the number one choice for crossbreeding to enhance beef production. One such farm rearing this breed is Olol Tipis Farm in Kajiado County. According to Francis Kukutia, the farm manager, this large breed can weigh over 650 kilograms when it has reached mature slaughter weight. Within six months, a calf can weigh 300 kilograms, yet its daily consumption of feed is only 40 kilograms, while a Frisian can feed up to 70 kilograms due to their genetic differences. Sasa kama management yololtepes ranch, mimi na mwenye shamba tulika pamoja, tukafikiria ya kwamba jinsi yenye tutaesa upgrade ile ngombe zetu siwe ni ngombe ambayo si tu kuwa na ngombe, bali kuwa na unafanya ile ile mambo ya ufugaji kama biashara ndipo sasa tukaenda mwaka wa 2009 mwezi wa sita tukaenda hapo traders show e, Nairobi tukakutana na watu wa Flegvi East Africa Limited ambayo sasa tulikuta walikuwa hata wanafanya wana introduce hiyo hii new breed inaitwa Flegvi tukarudi tukakaa kama management tukaamua kwamba zile ngombe zetu za borana tutaesafanya zikue tufanye crossbreed ya zile borana saiwals na na hata semental sikue breed tuwe na breed moja ambaye ni ngombe inaitwa flegvi this farm is in Kajiado County where many livestock farmers are affected severely during the dry season when we visited the farm though, it was during the end of the rainy season and the pastures were quite lush. Even though they have installed a feedlot system, Francis Kukutia, the farm manager, says that they usually prefer to graze their animals. He adds that the breed is quite hardy and is rarely affected by the hot weather that is mostly prevalent throughout the year. <laughs> Flegi vikuwa zero, zero grazing, unaesa weka semi, semi, semi free range na unaesa fuga kwa free range venye sisi tunafanya hapo lontepes. Flegi vi kulingana na ile research ambayo watu wamefanya kutoka inji za inje, wanasema flegi vi ukula eh, 45, kilos, eh, 45 kilos ukifungia ya nyasi na ikutole kitu kama 30 liters ya masiwa. According to Dr. Gishohi, the flag view can survive in many parts of the country. The flag view is a very good animal because it's very adaptable to different climates. Again, as you said, we wanted an animal that is going to survive in most areas of this country. You know Kenya has got many types of climates, the dry, semi-arid, which is the biggest part of this country. There is a white highland, what was the highlands, the Rift Valley. So this animal actually has got a physiology that adapts well to many climates. So we have no problem in adaptation. But of course, the uptake is high in the central. It is also high in Lefty Valley, the Mount Kenya region, a bit of Nyanza. 
but we are breeding in areas like uh, Kajiado and other dry areas and even in Garissa in some of the dry areas there is an uptick of fresh fish so and it is doing well because if it can survive in Karahari Desert in Namibia doing very well it can also survive in Kenya which is not even a desert and it also survives in very cold countries like in Canada so it can do well in very cold climates like in the Central Highlands. Dr. Gishohi explains how farmers interested in this breed can access its semen. We actually import the semen from Germany and then we supply it to most distributors across the country. If you go to every county, there are those we call the appointed semen distributors. So if you go to any semen appointed distributor or your inseminator who is licensed by the Director of Veterinary Services to operate in a certain area, you tell them you want breakfast semen, then they will get it from the distributor whom we supply and then they use it for your animal. And we tell the farmer, if you had wanted to inseminate your cow with breakfast, let the inseminator give you the straw so that you can confirm the name of the bull and the semen and you can call us on our number so that we can tell you that semen is from us because we can guarantee you the quality of the bull that you got. So the source of the semen is from the distributors and it's done through the inseminators. Some big farmers or some cooperatives can buy directly from us by calling us on our pilot line that is 0712 so that we can actually help them to acquire the semen. <laughs>